Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well. This is a HP laptop. It's about an 11 inch screen, I think. Um, I've purchased this for 30 euros. It's sold as being for repair and that it's not turning on. So I've already measured my power adapter and it's got 19 volts on it. So what we're gonna do is plug this in and see what happens. Okay, so what have we got? Press the power button, which is up here. It's really nice keys on this, actually. Do you hear them? For a small keyboard, it's really nice. If I press the power button. Okay. So the power button is staying on, and it's just turned off. And it's on again. And it's off again. Okay, so looking at that, it looks like we've got 3.3 volts for the power button. It looks like it's responding to that and it looks like it's trying to come on but can't for whatever reason with the keyboard taken out you can see right here i've got my power button that i've taken out just for convenience i've disconnected a little sideboard here with our usb devices that's the same cable that runs across here so we've got our one board right here but as you look at it it looks like there was spillage like on the front here you can see that there was certainly something spilled in the front here and if i look at this metal shield right here you can see there are remnants of you know, it shouldn't be there there's a little bit of rust there so i think there was something spilled on it so i'm going to take off that shield and i think there's a heat sink in it as well and let's see what's underneath Okay, so this is what the motherboard looks like. I there was the shield was on it here, so I've taken that off, and I'm sure immediately you can all see what I'm looking at right here as being a possible cause of the damage. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some measurements at the start, just to uh, and just see where we go with that. But you can obviously see that there is some damage on this board. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check for our DC volts in. So what we're going to do is get our multimeter. And volts DC, that's what it looks like right here. So I then get my black probe and I'm placing it to ground, which is here. And I get my red probe. And what we're going to do with the red probe is check each one of these pins here. This is where our cable comes from our DC power jack. I have already confirmed that there's 19.6 volts on the DC power jack. And we're just going to see which of these pins are which. I'm expecting to find ground on some of them and 19.6 volts on some of the other pins. And I don't know if there's a center pin on this one. So what I did was just basically measure this pin, then this pin, then this pin, then this pin, then this pin, and then this pin. Trying to do it very, very carefully, of course, without touching any of the pins off each other. And when I did that, I found that on our DC connector, I got these voltages. Now, to get these all on, I had to zoom in quite a bit. So let me just show you what I've got right here. Oops, too much. Okay, so we have our three ground pins right here. I'm sure if I pull this back, I'll probably see three black wires there, but I didn't bother doing it. On this pin, there's 0 0.46 volts. So I think that's some sort of ID pin. And then here we have 19 volts and 19 volts, 19.6 volts to be precise. So this is our positive and this, these are our ground pins. And we can see our path right here. So we have a couple of capacitors. Are they on that there? Well, there's one capacitor here on the input and it goes straight to this MOSFET right here. So I'm going to mark in that path and I'm going to see if I can get a, a schematic or just a data sheet, sorry, for this MOSFET right here. But it looks, again, that we have the similar to what we've seen on other laptops. Um, we have our DC voltage comes in. It goes across a capacitor to MOSFET number one. And then this looks like a second MOSFET here. Now, the other side of it goes to... I don't see it going to a current sense resistor here. Maybe that's on the other side of the board. It's going to two resistors here, but these don't look like current sense resistors. They're they're too large in value. Um, but what we're going to do is just get a data sheet for this and see where our 19 volts is going from there. I've got a data sheet for this MOSFET, so I'm going to bring that up on the screen right now. So this is the MOSFET right here. 
<clears throat> as you can see on pin number one we have source and two and three as well fourth pin is gate and then our four drain pins are on the other side so we're common enough we've seen these on some of the other laptops we've done what happens is let me look at it on the motherboard itself so we have 19 volts here on these four drain pins right here and we have a gate pin right here that controls whether this MOSFET allows that 19 volts come from here through to this point right here. It's an end channel MOSFET so if this gate pin is high that will switch the MOSFET on and the 19 will come through to here. If this gate pin is low this 19.6 volts will stay right here and we will have nothing here. Um, so let's mark out on the MOSFET those pins. Okay. So we know that we've got 19.6 volts right here. I've just marked the path of that here so we can keep following it. And I check my gate pin right here again in DC volts DC. And what I find is that there is 25.5 volts on this gate pin. So that's high. So we should now see this 19.6 volts coming through to this side if that MOSFET is working. And when I place my probe right here, I measure 19 volts at this point also. So we're now good past this MOSFET. Whatever the issue is over here with whatever damage is on the motherboard, it is not pulling the voltage at this first MOSFET. It's allowing the voltage to come through here. I'm going to check out what this MOSFET is and we're going to see if that 19.6 volts makes it to the next point which would be right here. So let me get a data sheet for this one and we're going to do the same thing again. So the second MOSFET is this one right here. I've got a data sheet for this and this is what it looks like. It is the Aon 7408. That is a 30 volt end channel MOSFET. Again these are very very common on these types of la uh, laptops. So this is our second MOSFET. So from the top view, same deal. Pin one is source, source, source. Uh, pin four is gate and drain pins on the other side. So if the gate pin is high, it allows it through. If the gate pin is low, uh, it doesn't allow our 19 volts through. So let's get a look at it as it is here. Um, so we have pin one is right here. So that means we have pin out as follows. So three source pins here, we know we've 19.6 volts on our source pins, we've got a gate pin here and we've got a drain pin right here. So I place my probe here in volts DC once again and I measure at this gate that we have 25.5 volts as well. So this MOSFET should be turned on and on the other side of the MOSFET I place my probe here and I measure 19.6 volts here also. We normally see a current sense resistor at this point here. I'm not sure if there's one on the other side of the board but this should be our main 19 volt power rail and it is present. So what we can tell from this is that there's nothing about this damage here or any of the other damage wh wherever else it might be on the board that is causing you know any of the safety systems on the board to basically pull gate voltage of either of these which it will do in the case of a short. So I'm not sure why why that is. You would expect that if there was a short, if these were causing a short, that either one of these would have its voltage pulled from the gate and that would basically stop the 19 volts in its tracks. But I think what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go around to a few of the secondary circuits and check if we have this 19.6 volts uh, present as the input to our secondary circuit. Just to clear up one small thing, I said earlier that I thought that our main 19 volt rail went from here onto this resistor here. It actually doesn't. These two resistors right here go through this little track here and onto the gate. So they're part of the circuit that feeds the gate of the second MOSFET. So what I wanted to do is just take a look around the board and see what voltages were present. Now, when I went here I found that there was 3.3 .3 volts at this point however that 3.3 .3 volts was coming online then going back to zero going back to 3.3 .3, and then back to zero again and I also found that there was a 5 volts down beside the USB down here this was going to 5 volts then to zero then to 5 volts so when we saw the LED on the power button earlier on going on and off. That's not actually a diagnostic code. 
that is the laptop attempting to start shutting down attempting to start again shutting down because that's reflected in the 5 volt and 3.3 volt uh, voltage rails across the board I was finding 9 volts present quite a bit all along this track right here there's 9 volts um, on the BIOS chip this is our BIOS chip right here so this is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 at no stage even when the 3.3 volt rail was going up and down there was never at any stage 3.3 volts on this which is kind of worrying um, where else did I look I also looked over yeah I just double checked on our power button we could see that there was a light on it and it did seem to be responding so I did think that there was going to be 3.3 volts on it and sure enough there was 3.3 volts on that pin there so there is a 3.3 volts always on present I did find my 19.6 volt present at this point here and these two MOSFETs here regulate that down to 9 volts so that's where 9 volts comes from and that is present in a you know it's present here which is at our battery connection which I would expect it to the charging voltage for our battery is 8.7 volts so I would have certainly expected to see around 9 volts at this point right here as our charging voltage for our battery but it was also present at other points as well um, across the board like here and on those other sections that I was showing earlier on so I don't know if that's what it's meant to be or whether that's a fault but I'm gonna focus back on where we started with this because I'm sure that you all spotted right off the bat that there is some spillage damage right here so before I clear it down just to see exactly what the fault is I'm gonna check and I'm gonna see if um, if this is just aesthetically damaged if it's just visual or is this section actually shorted here so let's get our multimeter in diode mode and check this so we obviously have the power plugged out now and our multimeter is in diode mode this time so I place my red probe to ground for diode mode and we're gonna start taking some measurements with our black probe so the only section that I could see where there is damage on this is this section right here and because I think it was a spill I don't think it's gone through to the other side of the board so I think the other side of the board should be intact unless this short has caused uh, s some difficulty in you know the circuitry but there's certainly no spill damage on the other side so what I wanted to do was just measure at the inductors here and here and just see if any of these was shorted so when I place my probe right here and measure in diode mode I get 0, 0.000 volts so this is a dead short right here when I measured in diode mode at this section right here we find that there is 0 0.078 volts I also did a resistance check at this point and I found that there was uh, it was in the order of hundreds of ohms so this section even though it looks like there is some spill damage here this section seems to be fine I will clean it down anyway afterwards but it's this section here that we appear to have a short so that's what we're going to work on next. Next step in troubleshooting I decided to do was to literally just clean this down. So this whole section here, I poured some a small bit of alcohol onto this section and wiped it down with a toothbrush and then dried it off with my hot air station. However, what I found was when I cleaned all of this off, the short was still there. It was still measuring 0, 0.000 volts in diode mode at this section right here so we obviously have a short component somewhere on this rail it, and it's actually a component it's not the liquid itself now I could just pull these three capacitors off the board and it's probably one of these that's gone shorted but what I decided to do was just to use voltage injection and just verify which one it was and then pull that one off but just before doing that I wanted to make sure that it wasn't this IC here that was shorted before I inject anything onto the board and what I decided to do was I removed this inductor right here okay so let me show you how that looks so when I removed it I've now two separate sections I have the section from here 
coming down here and going through these vias and I have the section here that goes back to this IC here. So what I found was when I measured in diode mode the section here was measuring 0 0.4 volts so the short was not on this side and just to confirm it I measured here in diode mode again and confirmed that we still had 0 0.000 volts on this side so the short on this rail is somewhere from here on uh, possibly a component through those vias but probably more likely here at the direct point where the spill happened. Next on to the fun part, voltage injection. What we're going to do here, just a brief outline of what voltage injection is used for. We inject voltage onto the board and at the shorted area and uh, hopefully we can identify which component is short because it will be the component that will carry the current to ground and because it's carrying the current to ground it will heat up. So where am I going to inject and how much am I going to inject? Well we don't know what that power rail is, it could be 1 volt, 3.3 volts, 5 volts, we just don't know. So the safest thing to do is start with the lowest voltage on the board which will be about 1 volt. So we're going to inject 1 volt and where we're going to inject it is where we see the short here. So I can see it's a little tricky to get something soldered in this area here because this is quite small when you actually view the board. So there was a nice little spot here with two solder blobs already. So I decided that we would inject here and we would find a ground at this point right here. So we need to set our injection voltage on our DC power supply here. Connect a red wire to here. Let me show you what that would look like and connect our black wire to a ground which is here. So I just soldered the two of those wires in position and then on my voltage I set 1 volt and starting with a current of 0 0.5 amps that's 500 milliamps. So I fed that into the board and nothing was getting heated up so I moved it up to 1 amp at 1 volt 1.5 amps, 2 amps, still at 1 volt. Nothing was getting warm. I was touching around the board to try and find what was getting warm, but nothing at all. You usually need to go over 2.5 or 3 amps in order for something to heat up. But when I changed it to 3.5 amps, I was then able to feel this component here starting to get warm. And I have a video of that next. This is a video I took while injecting 1 volt at 3.5 amps. Okay, so what I've done here is I don't have a thermal camera, so I have put alcohol around the area of the three capacitors. I actually knocked this one out by mistake when I was putting on the jumper wires, so I just left it out. This one, as it turns out, the one that was here is not shorted, so it's probably most likely that one of these is. So when I injected the voltage onto the board, this is what I saw. So you can see there's alcohol on the top of these two capacitors right here. So watch what happens. Okay, just watch that once again. What you're viewing there is the alcohol evaporating from this one because it's hot. Why is it hot? It's hot because this is the component that's carrying the current to ground. This is the shorted component here. This one is also evaporating the alcohol, but not as quickly. So this is the component that I think is shorted, and this is the one that I'm going to remove. So here we are back at the laptop, and as you can see, I have removed that capacitor from this location right here. So you can see right here. That's where the capacitor has been removed from. And with that capacitor removed, if I press the power button right here, you will see my laptop now powers on. So that's all that was wrong with it. Just somebody spilled something on it, one component, and that is what is preventing this laptop from booting. So I just cleared it down, removed that component. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace that capacitor right there and 
put the keyboard back on and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one but that's our little project for this week and uh, that is our HP laptop working again I think this comes with Windows 10 Home who knows I might give it to a relation or something like that that's our little job for this week thanks very much for watching if you have any comments just please put them down below and I'll be back with something next week